let's make a custom block entity. Forging fabric courses with advanced topics such as entities, custom structures, and 3D armor models linked in the description below. Alright friends, I was back in IntelliJ once more, and in this tutorial we're going to be making a custom block entity. Now this will be split into two parts, roughly speaking. So the idea is that this part we're going to make a completely functional entity, it's going to work. Now what it's not going to do is not going to show any progress. This is something we're going to do in the next tutorial. And then also it's not going to have any custom recipes associated with it. This is also something we're going to do in the next tutorial. This time we're basically going to hard code everything. So we're going to write everything inside of the actual methods, which is not the best way to do it, especially with, you know, custom block entities. You really want to have both tutorials side by side. I just do it this way because otherwise, you know, it would just get too much. It's a lot of new stuff that we have to add this tutorial already. So, so bear with me. It's going to be quite a bit. In essence, there's four different parts of this. There's the block, the block entity, there's the screen and the screen handler. Now we're going to basically go through, first of all, adding the block entity, and then we'll see, you know, what we have to do. This is going to be a very circular exercise anyway, so you can't just say, oh, we're just going to start here and then go through there. We're going to have to go back and forth a little bit one way or the other, but that's going to be fine. So first of all, in the block package, we're going to make a new package called entity. And inside of there, we're going to make two new classes. One of them is going to be the mod block entities and the other one is going to be our custom entity so this is going to be the mithril blaster block entity there you go quite the mouthful but we're going to get through this so first of all in the blaster entity right here we want two things and that is going to be extending it by the block entity class and then also implementing two different interfaces one of which actually does not exist so this is the named screen handler that does exist and then the other one is the implemented inventory and then of course doesn't exist because we have to create it ourselves i personally created in the item package in a new package called inventory it could also go into the utils that's fine and i'm just going to create this so new class this is going to be an interface called implemented inventory go oh, and what i'll do is i'll just copy over the contents here this is all available to you as well of course in the github repository and individual just as well this is by juice and this is basically the silent inventory just made it a little bit nicer so this just is way easier to use than what we currently have and this is under the creative commons public domain so no worries there everyone can use it whatever but still of course some credit here is kind of nice so we're just going to do that and then add this right here so this is going to be the implemented inventory and then we'll hover over this implement methods okay and then hover over this again create constructor matching super and there we go so now we have the block entity and this is going to be very very interesting to basically continue along we're going to make the mod block entities first and this is going to look kind of like this we're going to have a public static block entity type in the angle brackets a mithril blaster block entity and this is the mithril underscore blaster now this is done and then we want to actually have a public static void register all block entities method right here and this is where we want to assign this field. So we want to say mithril blaster is equal to registry dot register. And then the registry dot block entity type. So this one right here, comma, a new identifier with, of course, our tutorial mod, mod ID and the mithril underscore blaster right here. And then after the first parentheses, comma, fabric block entity type builder right here dot create mithril blaster block entity colon colon new comma i know this is quite a bit but bear with me um mod blocks dot mithril blaster and then after the first parentheses dot build and then passing into this build a null so we're gonna have one issue right here in the create that is no worry at all because we have to change the actual constructor right here so this constructor right here right now takes in the block entity type. This is not what we want. We only want this to take in the position and the state. And then the error here should go away in theory. And then here we, of course, also get an error, but this can then be replaced by doing block entities dot mithril blaster. There you go. 
So this is what I said with the circular nature, right? So we have to change the actual constructor in order to register this, but then we have also have to register this to change the constructor. So it, there's going to be a few more instances of this very circular way of doing it, but no worries at all. Just before we forget it, let's actually call this as well. So this is going to be the mod block entities dot register all block entities so that we call this and then this should be fine as well. Now we want an inventory in here. So the inventory, of course, is going to save the item stacks that are inside of the actual, well, GUI, right? So we put something in the GUI and it has to be stored somewhere. So this is going to be a this. So this is going to be a private final defaulted list of type item stack called inventory. And this is going to be equal to a defaulted list dot of size four with item stack dot empty as its default value. In this case, our inventory is going to have four different slots. It's going to have a fuel slot, two item slots, and then one output slot. So if you have a different size, this is where you would need to change this as well. Very important. And then in the get items here, we can just return the inventory and then we're going to be fine. For the display name, I'm just going to make a new literal text right here called Mithril Blaster. If you want to make this completely proper, then you would probably make a translated text, stuff like that. But, you know, for the time being, this is going to be totally fine. Right now here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make this an error. I highly recommend you do the same because this is something that, you know, a lot of people, including myself, by the way, uh, forget this quite often, you know, because there's so much to do, we're going to have to make a new screen handler in a little bit. So making this an error here is way better because then you're going to be like, wait, why doesn't this work? Well, it's an error. Oh, I have forgotten to make the new screen handler right here. So it just makes a lot of sense to do it like this. So the next thing that we want, I'm actually going to copy over this is going to be the read and the write NBT method, but nothing too crazy, right? You can see all of this is, of course, as always available to you in the description below, get a pass for an individual just as well. And you can see this, the write NBT method just writes the inventory right here to NBT. And then here it reads the inventory. So it's just there for when we basically enter the world or we you know, we save the world that our inventory inside of this actual block entity is also properly saved. Right, the rest of the methods we're going to add in just a little bit. But before we have to do this, we actually want to change a little bit in the actual block. So the Mithra Blaster block right here that we've created last time, right, this was just a normal block. Now it's going to be a little bit different. Now it's going to be a block with entity and it's going to implement the block entity provider. This is this one right here. So we're going to hover over this, implement methods, and then we're going to Go back up, implement method. So this is going to be the create block entity method that we have to now use. So I'm just going to add, you know, a little bit of a comment here so that we know, you know, what is what. So this is going to be block entity. So this is all added because of the block entity, everything that's below this. So this is the create new block entity. And this is actually very easy. We just want to make a new mithril blaster block entity passing in the position and this state. Now, this is not all that we want, actually. We want a few more things. One of the most important ones is the get render type right here. We want to override this and we want to return the block render type dot model. Otherwise, our block is going to be invisible. So that's very important that you override this method. Very, very important. And then we're going to have two different methods that I'm going to also copy over this, the onUse method and the onStateReplaced method. There you go. The onUse method is used when we right click this block and we're basically just making sure, hey, are we on the server? And if we are, then we're creating a new screen handler. And if that one is not null, then we're going to open it. So this basically just opens the GUI. You can think of it like that. And the onState replace method is used when we actually destroy the block so that everything inside of the block, inside of the actual inventory is also dropped. This is also quite important, right? Because of course you want everything to be dropped as well. And then last but not least, we're going to make one more method and that is the get ticker method right here. So we're going to override this. And this is actually going to return something a little bit different. This is going to return check type. So you can see the check type method. And in here, what we want to do is we want to pass in the type. I'm going to say mod block entities dot mithril blaster and then mithril blaster block entity colon colon tick. Now the tick method has not yet been created in our block entity. So what we have to do is we have to, of course, create it. Otherwise, this entire thing should be done pretty much. You just want to create the tick method. Right, I will copy over the four static methods once again, but like always, they are available to you in the GitHub repository and in the gist as well. And I will explain what this does. But first of all, we should now see that the tick here is gone, right? That's the issue. And now this should be done. The block class is final and we are done with it. We can close that and take a look at those four static methods. So in theory, we could all do everything here in the tick method, but I've refactored it so that it's a little bit nicer to read. So you can see if, you know, the particular entity has a recipe inside of it and it has not reached the stack limit of its output slot, 
then we craft an item. That's pretty much all that we're doing. Those are the three methods here. The tick method, of course, being called every tick. Should be fairly self-explanatory, all things considered. And then every tick, right, we're going to check, hey, does this entity have a recipe? Now, in this case, this is just a bool boolean here. And we're just checking, hey, is the stack in slot zero a lilac flower bulb? Is the stack in slot one a golden pickaxe? And is the stack in slot two a mithril ingot? And if all three of those are true, then we know we have a recipe. And then we're just checking whether or not the stack limit has been reached for the output slot, which is slot of index three. In this case, and remember, we start counting at zero. This is why the first slot has index zero. And then if, if both of those things are true, then we'll craft the item. And this just says, remove the items from slot zero, one, and two, and set the item stack in slot three to the mithril pickaxe, and then just add one, basically. So we're looking at how many are already in there. If there's nothing in there, we're just going to add one. If there's two in there, we're going to add another one. Now, in this case, actually, the mithril pickaxe, this is, isn't going to work, right? But if this wasn't a mithril pickaxe, then this is definitely the code that you would want. Because, of course, the mithril pickaxe don't stack. So in this case, there's always only going to be one there, but that's going to be fine because this is all done with the has not reached stack limit method, right? So this is going to be able to respond to this, so to speak, uh, dynamically, right? This is a crude way of doing it. It will work like this is going to work. However, if you want multiple different recipes, the next tutorial is exactly what you would need. So highly recommend, like I said, doing both of them either at the same time or after one another, because this definitely is going to be, well, changed quite a bit after we have added the, you know, custom serialization, because then we can actually add custom JSON files that are going to act similar to this, right, with this recipe boolean, but it's just going to be, well, way cleaner, a little bit better, but this will work. This will work in theory, and for just uh, for testing things, it's going to be totally fine, and this is going to be fine for us at the moment as well. Right, so now we still have this screen handler issue right here, and this is, of course, where the other classes come in. So in the tutorial mod package, we're going to make a new package called screen. And this is going to include a new package called the slot package. This is going to be the first one we're going to do, because here we actually want to create two different slots. So we're going to do that first. This is going to be the mod fuel slot, and then the other one is going to be the mod result slot. We're going to make those in just a moment. So let's actually close a few things and then let's create the other three classes in the screen package. This is going to be the mod screen handlers. It's also going to be the mithril blaster screen. And last but not least, it's also going to be the mithril blaster screen handler. There you go. We're going to start in the screen handler right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this extends the screen handler class this one right here and we're going to hover over this implement methods the can use method and then hover over this again create constructor matching super now this is going to be a little bit different we actually wanted to delete this one as well once again and then what we're going to do is we actually want to copy this over so duplicate this because we want two different public constructors so change the protected here to public as well the first one is going to have a sync id and then a player inventory called player inventory and this is then going to be fine. The second one is going to have a sync ID, a player inventory called player inventory, and an inventory called inventory. What we're going to do is the first constructor is actually going to call the second constructor. So instead of super, we're going to say this. We're going to pass in the sync ID as a second parameter of the player inventory, and then a new simple inventory with size 4. Once again, this size 4 right here has to match the size that we've defined in our block entity. So right here, we've defined a size 4 of its inventory, and this has to match as well. So keep that in mind. We also want two fields. This is going to be the private final inventory called inventory. Now this is going to be done right here. So we're going to do a few things here. We're going to call the check size method, passing in the inventory and then the expected size four. This just makes sure that, you know, the expected size here is correct. And then this dot inventory is going to be set to inventory. And then we're going to say inventory dot on open. And then we're going to say player inventory dot player. There you go. This type will will fix in just a moment. And then what we'll do is we'll have three methods that we actually want to copy over. And this is going to be very interesting. So I'm just going to copy them over. Once again, this is available to you in the GitHub repository and individual just as well. The transfer slot method basically just makes sure that when you shift click into this, that everything works correctly. It looks quite complex, but that's just pretty much how what it does. The add player inventory and the add player hotbar method just add the inventory and the player hotbar uh, to the actual screen as well. So we needed to call those at the bottom here. So we want to say add player inventory first and then just pass in the player inventory and then add player hotbar and pass in the player hotbar as well. And then our slots are going to come in right here. So for this, we're going to say this dot add slot and then we can make a new slot. 
Now you can see, let's just make a new slot here. We have to pass in the inventory, the index of it, the actual X and Y coordinates on the actual GUI. So those two I will explain in just a moment. Right now, this is a slot and this is our first slot. Now actually, this one, I personally want to be our fuel slot. So therefore, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go into our mod fuel slot class and I'm going to make this slot. I'm actually going to copy it over because this is going to be a little bit faster. You can see pretty much the can insert method means that, hey, can we actually insert a particular item stack into this type of slot? And this will only be insertable if this can be used as a fuel. That's literally all that we're doing, basically. Right, that is the mod fuel slot and the mod result slot is a very, very straightforward as well. It just says, hey, you know what, you can't insert anything into here regardless of what the item stack is uh, i've taken those from uh, vanilla examples so the fuel slot i believe is a thing that exists if i actually include non-project items there you go fuel slot for example that's actually the brewing stand fuel slot but i believe there should also be one in the furnace fuel so there you go that also works but it only works with the abstract furnace screen handler and i just changed it about with the inventory here so that's pretty much all that there is to it nothing too crazy so let's go back into our screen handler right here and this is then going to be the mod fuel slot let's just duplicate this four times this is going to be the slot this is going to be a normal slot as well and then this is going to be the mod result slot mod result slot there you go now make sure that the index goes up with each slot that you add zero one two three very important and then the x and y coordinates here are specific for the gui so i'm gonna the gui is basically defined in the screen in just a moment but let's actually take a look at that for the time being so i'm going to already going to copy it over so in the textures folder right click new directory called gui and i'm going to quickly copy it over and explain what this does so the gui is you know very interesting it is a 256 by 256 image however this image right here is actually not of that size like it's not of that full size you obviously right you have a little bit more here so this is i believe like 176 by 168 something similar to this this is the normal size of the you know of a GUI basically and you could still define this as well so we can you know change this in theory as well but for the time being this is the original size here this image is of course also available to you I highly recommend checking this out and the idea is that you know we start at the very top left corner at a zero zero and then you count so basically 18 pixels to the right and then what is it 55 or 50 pixels down is this pixel right here which then starts this slot that is the entire idea of this, and that is pretty much all that there is to it. Right, so the other ones I've, of course, already prepared where those are. This is 66 and 50, and then this is 114 and 33. There you go. And then this is pretty much all that we need. Now, we still have this error right here, which we can fix very easily in the mod screen handlers class. But this is going to be where we add this screen handler. So we're just going to say public static screen handler type of mithril blaster screen handler very very long and this is going to be the mithril underscore blaster underscore screen underscore handler because why not <laughs> quite the crazy name and that this is going to be equal to the screen handler registry dot register symbol with a new identifier tutorial mod dot mod id and then mithril underscore blaster and then after the first parentheses comma mithril blaster you can already see it colon colon new and then ending it with a semicolon now this is then used right here so we're just going to say mod screen handlers dot screen handler right there you go and then we can actually also delete a few things right here before i forget it because this is very important the can use method false of course would be an issue here what we want to do is we want to say this dot inventory dot can player use and then passing the player and that would be that as well and then everything here in the screen handler has been done we can now proceed to go to the screen itself so this is going to be this one right here and this is going to be extending the handled screen of type mithril blaster screen handler so we're going to hover over this implement methods this is the draw background method and then we also create constructor matching super now there's a couple of things that we need and i will copy them over because they are not that interesting we also want the render method just in case there you go and then we also want the init method nothing too crazy just this just centers the title text there and then we also want the texture so this is a new identifier here which just points to the texture that we've just copied over right here under textures GUI Mithril Blaster GUI. So it just points to that one. And then the actual draw background method is not that crazy. This is pretty much all boilerplate code. 
you know, just setting stuff, setting the actual texture and then drawing it. That's pretty much all that we're doing here in the draw background method. And that is all that is pretty much the extent to the screen class for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to change this up quite a bit. So we're going to add the, you know, all of this, right? The flames that we're going to burn and then also the progress arrow as well. So this is something we're going to add in the next tutorial as well. But with that, we now have to go back into our entity here and right here in the create menu, right? We are going to make a new Mithril Blaster screen handler passing in the sync ID, the inventory, and then this. Now this arrow is complete as well. And then last but not least, we want to go into our tutorial client mod class. And then at the very bottom, we want to say screen registry dot register the mod screen handlers dot mithril blaster screen handler, and then mithril blaster screen colon colon new. And that should be all of the things that we need to do. Like I said, it's pretty circular. It's a lot of stuff that we have to add and it can get quite complicated. But as always, you know, just take your time with it, go through everything and you always have the GitHub repository in the gist as well. I cannot stress this enough. It's incredibly important. If you have this running once, you know, adding it a second time is way easier, of course, obviously. But that should be all of the things that we need. So now let's see if it works. All right, we found ourselves in Minecraft. So let's just set it down and right click the block. And there you go, everything working. Now, if this is not the case for you for the first time, don't worry about it. The actual adding of this is quite complicated so that you might make a misstep at some point somewhere during it. There's a lot of ways that you can basically, you know, forget something. Oh, there's another new thing here. So I just once again, highly recommend go to the gist or the GitHub repository, maybe go through the actual video again and then you should be able to find it. So let's actually try and see if the if thing actually works. So this is going to be the flower bulb and the ingot. And then here, I believe I should need a golden pickaxe. So let's just get, you know, two of them. And if I add this right here, so I can actually add as many as I want, add this right here, and then add this right here. There you go, get a mithril pickaxe. And it is a real pickaxe. There you go, I can throw it around. So it all works out. Do this again, there you go. And it keeps working. So this is the quick way of doing it, of course, right? We're not really consuming the fuel correctly. We're not getting any progress here. This is something we're going to do in the next tutorial, but this is pretty much already a working thing. So if you want something like this, then of course it would totally work as well. Right, as I've said, block entities, probably one of the most complicated things to add to the game. You know, there's a lot of complicated stuff, of course, that's going to come in the future now. Now we're like really, we're now grown up, right? Now it's going to go pretty freaking crazy. Pretty cool stuff that we're going to add, but it's going to be really awesome as well. But that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. I also want to thank all of my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting me and this channel. It is very much appreciated and I'll see you in the next tutorial. So, yeah.